what is corporate profit shifting? It's in, in its general sense, the broadest sense, it's the illegal movement of money from a high tax jurisdiction into a low tax jurisdiction. So uh, the the aim of all this is, of course, to to lower the total tax that is due of the multinational group of companies or uh, a multinational corporation. Now there are lots of ways to do so. Uh, the major ones are listed here. Uh, but uh, the companies are getting innovative, so every time there is a, a policy that combats one of these ways, uh, the firm finds another. All right, so on the simplest example of how it works, imagine a firm A that resides in the Czech Republic, my home country, and imagine a firm B that resides in Cyprus, which is a very uh, popular tax haven for Czech firms. Now, imagine that the firm B owns firm A, right? So there is some kind of an ownership a link between the two companies that is translated into data as a foreign direct investment of firm B into firm A. And what firm A does is that it shifts the profit from the Czech Republic, so the profit that is made in the Czech Republic shifts it illegally into Cyprus, into firm B. Now, why would a firm do so? Of course, uh, one of the major reasons is that in Cyprus the, the corporate income tax rate is lower. But there are also other reasons like uh, increased financial secrecy in Cyprus in, uh, with respect to the Czech Republic and uh, other favorable conditions on, on minimum holdings and, and so on. I'm going to sum up the motivation of my paper or our paper in, in three main points, three main areas. So the first one is going to be, is there even actually corporate profit shifting? Now, the cases in the media and uh, some, some evidence of, of individual cases suggest that there is. So the, question to, the, the answer to this question is obvious, maybe but it serves as kind of a robustness check of our methodology if we get the same answer as, as we would anticipate, right? So the second question is much more uh, difficult to answer. It asks how much corporate profit is actually shifted and from which countries. And the third question is how much do these countries lose on tax revenues as a result of this profit shifting? The methodology that we employ in this paper is called the FDI approach. It has been pioneered by UNCTAD in its uh, 2015 World Investment Report. Now the basic idea of the approach is that if there is profit shifting, so we assume that there is, then it's going to show somehow in the data, right? Which is what we want. We want to observe the practices in the data. So the way it shows in the data is that as deflated reported profits in higher tax jurisdictions. So basically what we could say is that if there is more FDI from tax havens in one country, the reported profits in that country are going to be deflated somehow because the profits were shifted before they were taxed in that high tax jurisdiction. So coming back to my example with the Czech Republic and Cyprus, we're focusing on this channel as it's going to show out in the, in the reported profits of Czech firms uh, as, de as decreased, right? And the reported profit in Cyprus has increased. All right, so what kind of data is available on this uh, to, to uh, evaluate this problem, to analyze this problem, is the first one, the, the first category is the FDI stock. So the amount of money that is invested from tax havens or from, uh, from these bad countries into the, the good countries, right? The, the well-behaved countries. So on FDI stock, we use the IMF Coordinated Direct Investment Survey that uh, contains some kind of a, a matrix of firms that have uh, the, the investing countries as rows and the, uh, the invested in countries. As, uh, as columns, right? So there's some kind of a bilateral metrics. We also complement this uh, by, by UNCTAD's own FDI statistics, which is uh, a unilateral database. So there's only uh, the amount of inward, inward FDI and uh, we don't know from where that FDI comes. Then the second part of the relationship that we want to estimate is the rate of return on this investment. Now to do so, we use the IMS uh, balance of payments data which contain the, the rate of return on FDI that is invested in a country, okay? We also use a component of this as a, as a kind of robustness check, the equity component, which is a, a subset of, of the rate of return. All right, all right, right? All right, so what, what we need is some kind of a measure of how much foreign direct investment in a country comes from these bad countries, right? The non-compliant countries, you can say. Uh, we define this, we call this the offshore indicator, which is the share of inward FDI from these recent countries. We classify those in two categories, the tax havens, so your classic uh, Cayman Islands, Germany, Cyprus, countries like this. Uh, we allocate one, we say that 100% of investment from these countries is risky, because the, the economic activity in these countries is very uh, low compared to the level of outward FDI from these countries. 
The second uh, group of countries is, is those that uh, record data of special purpose entities' activities. Those are, for example, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Hungary, Austria. Uh, some countries, central banks, uh, report how much profit or how much money of the FDI figure that, that is reported is actually just money flowing through that country and doesn't stay actually in that country, okay? So for, for this purpose, are, are exactly special purpose entities uh, created. All right, so imagine the offshore indicator as uh, this is FDI in country X, this is FDI from tax havens, and this is FDI from these SP enabling countries. The other FDI is what we call non-risky, okay? So the offshore indicator is the first, first two parts. All right, so the basic idea that I, that I talked about at the beginning is that if the offshore indicator is high in one country, then the reported profits in that country on this FDI are gonna be deflated, so lower in some way. So let's take a first look at the data, the offshore indicator on the horizontal axis. We see that the, the relationship on the, on the global scale is uh, is negative, so that is a kind of a confirmation of the of the anticipated answer to the first question. But there are lots of differences between countries, right? To put them all on one graph is, is easy and nice to see, but it doesn't really tell you uh, some real numbers, okay? So that is why we include, in, in the estimation of this relationship, we have to include some uh, country fix effects and uh, year fixed effects and also income group fixed effects. I'm gonna talk about that more in the, in the later part. All right, so let's move to the second question. So how much corporate profit is actually shifted and from which countries? Now, to estimate that, we estimate what we call the profitability gap, right? So it's the difference in the rate of return on FDI that we would expect and the actual reported rate of return on that FDI. Okay, so that's the profitability gap. We assume that it is due to profit shifting because we assume that investment from Cyprus it should be no more profitable than investment from Spain. There is no reason for an investment that is vested in one country to be more profitable based on which country it comes from. Okay, so we say that the only reason that the profits could be lower is that the profits were shifted out of that country. All right, so let's look at the results uh, of the estimation of this relationship. So the offshore indicator itself, as I said, is a negative uh, significant predictor of the rate of return. Now, uh, imagine that you're looking at the Czech Republic, for example, so it's gonna be the sum of these three numbers, so the offshore indicator itself, and then the category, it's a high-income country in the OECD, and it's in Europe, okay? So the sum of these three is gonna make, make up the, the final estimate of the profitability gap for the Czech Republic. For Mozambique, for example, it's, which is a low-income country in the sub-Saharan African region, it's gonna be the sum of these three. So in this case, uh, coincidentally, we omitted the base as uh, uh, we, we started from low-income countries from Sub-Saharan Africa as the base for, uh, for this estimation. But it's an equivalent. Uh, from, from the profitability, tech, profitability gap, it's just one easy step to get to the missing profits, right? So the missing profit due to this profit shifting can be easily derived as the product of the profitability gap and the amount of risky FDI in dollars. So if, if you're not lost yet, the, the, the amount of risky FDI is the, the product of the offshore indicator times the total FDI in a country. The last step is how much do these countries lose on tax revenue as a result? Now again, the step from the missing profits to the tax revenue results is, is kind of easy. So we just uh, uh, multiply the missing profit by the effective corporate tax rate that is applied in that country. And what we get are estimates of tax revenue effect of, uh, of profit shifting from the, uh, based on this method. All right, so the first thing we remark is that there is a lot of missing data, okay? So that's, that's one big issue that we, that we face and that uh, we aim to overcome in the coming years. We hope that uh, the method will be improved by, by more and more data being available. Now you see that in, uh, in USD billions, the biggest losers are, are uh, some developed countries in Western Europe and some less developed countries in Latin America and, uh, and Mexico. Looking at the numbers as shares of GDP, we see two columns. The first one is for the rate of return. The second one is for the, for the equity component. 
which we like to view as a as kind of a lower bound, an upper bound of our estimates. Okay, so the, there are two there are two estimates of the final effect, and we say that it's some somehow in that interval. Okay, so you see the the biggest losers on this on this table. We'll have to look in the future in uh, in specificity on countries that that lose the most, like Saint Martin is supposed to lose 6% of their GDP, which seems quite high. And uh, we're gonna be looking into reasons why it is so. Uh, coincidentally, Mozambique is second. Um, it falls well into this conference. <laughs> All right, so let me zoom in for uh, to Europe for, for a second, which has uh, much better data coverage. And uh, if we look in, at numbers in, in, USD doll in US dollars, you see that the biggest losers are, are the developed countries of Europe, right? But if I invert this as a share of GDP, we're looking at a whole different map with, uh, with lower income countries in Europe losing the most. Okay, so that's another um, observation from, from the results that we made. What we achieved is support, additional support for uh, previous relatively high numbers of, uh, of corporate profit shifting. The tax revenue losses in total in the whole world for, uh, resulting from this method are in the order of $200 billion, so it's a lot of money. And uh, as I said, the lower income countries in the relative term, so as a share of GDP or their tax revenues, lose much more okay, than, the, than the developed countries. Now, at the same time, for these lower income countries, it's much harder to fight back because they, there's this big multinational and uh, lower income countries are not in the position to fight back on, on, this, on these practices. All right, so my final slide is talking about the drawbacks. As you see, there's a lot of them. And uh, I'm gonna divide those into two categories. The ones that we think that might be solvable and those that are not solvable because of the method, because of the, the nature of, of the method. All right, so the first one that, that we will do is to derive shares of corporate taxes because now uh, with the new GRD, the new addition, our estimates can be linked with, because our estimates are for 2015. So we could not link them to tax revenues because data was not available up until a couple of weeks ago. So that's the first step that we're gonna do to, to improve the, the results. Now the limited coverage, as I said, maybe it will improve in the future. We might look into some additional data sources that would, um, that would improve the coverage. Now a, another problem is that the methodology still partly relies on, on a, on a zero one definition of tax havens. So if we say that there are 40 tax havens that we classify as tax havens, then this is a, an arbitrary decision at all times. All right, so maybe we'll use, uh, we'll, we'll look into use of some, of some uh, spectral uh, measures of, of being a tax haven, like the financial secrecy index is gonna be probably the, uh, the best choice in this case. Also, we're gonna look at some unique features of some countries, as you saw, uh, Belgium was for some reason red. And we might be looking also into, into including tax treaties data as, a, as an explanatory variable. Now, what is not solvable is that these estimates only uh, include those profit shifting practices that require a foreign direct investment link. Okay, so if there are two entities that are not linked in the data on foreign direct investment, our results do not cover that, okay? So, so what, what this means is that our estimates can be taken as a lower bound, okay? Some kind of a subset of all the profit shifting that is, take, that is taking place. Uh, the second one is that it's an inherently imperfect method. We, we talked about this uh, before the presentations, that the only thing we know about our estimates is that they are wrong, okay? But <laughs> it's, it's just, to present some kind of an order, order of magnitude of, of, uh, of how much of this is actually happening. And another one is, is that we're not sure whether to, to use in the last step of the, of the methodology, whether to use effective or nominal corporate tax rates, because we're never, we can never be sure that if there was more foreign direct investment in a country, what the effective tax rate would be, because this is an endogenous decision of the, of the, of the state, which uh, can uh, uh, decrease taxes for some, for some uh, investment opportunities, and so on.